Scully, Scully. It's Chief Yellowstone. Yeah. Don't be afraid. He's always been friendly. Chief Yellowstone says certain lands have been granted his people by treaty, but buffalo hunters and white settlers have cut deeper and deeper into their territory and have caused much trouble. Soldiers, too, have crossed their borders. He says his younger braves are demanding war. He does not want war and calls upon Colonel Reed to keep the treaty. Tell Chief Yellowstone that by the authority vested in me by my government, I make a promise that henceforth the Indian land shall be respected north from the boundaries of the Shen Shelf, east of the Winfield Scott Range, south of Little Horn Valley, west to the River Wachope. Hanyo, Onestawa, Ino Awa, Achenewa, Kajigoge, Wawale, Nihorioqua, Shen Shaw, Horion, Wachupe. I'd like to make a report. Does it concern the matter at hand, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Proceed. Three white buffalo hunters murdered, Little Horn Valley. Clear evidence, sir, that it was done by Indians. Scalps? Yes, sir. Mr. Knight. Tell Chief Yellowstone that I hold him responsible for any further acts of hostility. Yes, sir. Akko. Yasune. Tono. Agato. Jagonosh. Ejeesa. Neswaga Kutnike. Chief Yellowstone says he cannot be held responsible for the deeds of the rebellious young men of his tribe. Hey, what happened? You only supposed to have been gone five days. Where's Kitty? She's not here. What do you mean she's not here? Well, she is here, but I don't know if she's so eager to see you fellows. Why are you? Oh, please excuse it. I have made ready for you, gentlemen, the bath. The first one that would be there would be the cleanest. A dance tonight. I thought you would like to know. Well, you are coming to the dance, aren't you? Of course, darling. If I may have the first poker. Oh, Papa. Window. Why you don't hey! hey! I've never 
since I got here from the point. Day after day. I think my routine drills a lot of paperwork. I'm fed up. Don't worry, sonny. One of these days, your pappy will decide it's about time for his boy to get killed. And sure enough, he'll send you out with us. And we wouldn't want anything to happen to the Colonel's son. What do you want to do, ride to glory in a day? Not glory. I want action. You're still a half-baked papoose. You've got to learn to walk before you can ride. Well, why couldn't I have a chance as a killer, like the one that owned these? You brought him in and got your promotion. Sure, sure, just like that. What about that dance tonight? Yeah, any special occasion, Randy? Sure, it's a special occasion. Farewell dance for Sis. Where's Kitty going? St. Louis. I just thought you might be interested. Or can it be that I'm mistaken? Ah, yes. Beautiful, romantic, divine love. <laughs> All right, you're printing back. I was having enough out of you. Supposed to be kind of different with Kitty away. Yeah. I guess you know how I feel about her, Larry. I guess it's no secret. I haven't got much time. I think I'll propose to Kitty at the dance tonight. Good luck, Phil. in love with you. I've never stopped. Kitty. Please, Phil. Well, you can't stop me now. I've waited too long. Phil, I've got to tell you something. Wait a minute, Kitty. Wait until I... I did love you. I did. You must believe that. It's so hard to explain. It's too strange to put into words. But you know when you stop loving. You know that what was real yesterday isn't real anymore. And that suddenly, miraculously, you've changed. You're in love with someone else. Oh, I know it sounds unbelievable. That's why it's been so difficult to explain. Does he know about it? I think he's waiting to dance with you. Dancing, Lieutenant? No, sir. There's a curious thing. In spite of the three years I've spent here, I can't seem to get used to the bigness of this place, the, the emptiness, the, the... Loneliness? Yeah, the loneliness. There's something about it, though, that holds you. I suppose my daughter knows what that something is, because she likes to come here on her vacation. On the other hand, Mrs. Reed thinks otherwise. Couldn't pry her loose from St. Louis with a team of mules. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned from Lieutenant Acton that you've been on your own since you were quite young. Since I was about eight. Until I came here, I was under the impression that uh, West Pointers, in general, made the best officers. I don't mean that in any form of snobbery. I understand, sir. In fact, Mr. Knight, you've proved there's always an exception to the rule. Thank you. By the way, forgive me for keeping good news to the very last. 
But I've recommended you for promotion to captain. I appreciate that very much, sir. Anything I should know? Well, if so, perhaps Mr. Knight should tell you. Haven't you forgotten something? Our dance? I thought you'd forgotten. Why? Phil. You think a good deal of Phil's friendship, don't you? I guess I do. And you wouldn't do anything to mar that friendship, would you? That's about it. Suppose you were both in love with the same girl. I mean, just suppose. I'd imagine she'd never know about it. Would she? Maybe. Why? Well, he's known the girl most of her life. Yes. And her family is his kind of folks. Yes. Besides, he's in love with her. Larry, I've just told Phil that I'm not in love with him. You're happy. That's all that matters, sis. Congratulations. Thanks, Phil. Say, sis, you haven't told us when it's to be. Mother and I will decide the date together. I'll be leaving for St. Louis within a fortnight. Fortnight? fortnight. Come on, sis, this is my dad. Sure thing. So you're not going to drive through Indian territory this time of night, are you? Much safer. Hooray for the hoorah! <laughs> Watch yourself again. Oh, Joe, honey. How's the time for us? Yeah, tell you about it later. Andy, be a good fellow and bring my stuff in. Hi, Sergeant. Hello, Sergeant. Hello, Sergeant. Hello, Sergeant. Three days away. Late. And no word. So I wait and I wait. Well, what excuse would you give this time, Mr. Sergeant Johansson? Look, my sweet, angelic, devoted wife. When a husband comes home, he expects a kiss from his woman. Not to make explanation. And they put the stuff in the house. <laughs> I'm telling you for the last time, those suitcases got mixed. I swear it to you, I never even looked at the woman. Go to Hillock, down the wall. Hilda! <laughs> Having words with the missus, Sergeant? Yeah, yeah, my wife, she find a suitcase that belonged to some Lulu. How's that, Sergeant? A Lulu? Yeah, she was on the stagecoach. So, you never looked at her, never spoke to her. I tell you, sir, you can't tell a woman ever can. But I go to the colonel in the morning, I get a pass, and I take the suitcase back to the little lady. She'd give me a reward, maybe, huh? Over my dead body, you will. Mr. Acton, would you do a good woman a service and please give back that release to that, that woman when you go to Jackson? Well, I, I won't promise, but I'll do my best. Uh, what'd you say the, Lou, uh, the lady's name was, Sergeant? Miss Laura Jordan. Laura Jordan. I knew you knew your name. You no, you don't talk with Hilda. Now, as you know, we're very short-handed at this fort. And therefore, I'm compelled to send you out on details again. Mr. Acton? Yes, sir. You will take platoon C and patrol the country between the Shen Shou and the Winfield Scott Range. Yes, sir. Mr. Knight? Yes, sir. You will take platoon B and patrol the entire territory east of the Little Horn Valley. Right, sir. Proceed to the town of Jackson and establish your headquarters there. Remember, under no circumstances, cross the Wachupi River. Everything within that area is Indian land, their land. Those are my orders. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Knight. 
You'll be leaving for St. Louis in a few months for your wedding. I'll see that you get a good, long leave of absence. Thank you, sir. Begging Colonel Reed's pardon. Yes, Lieutenant. Sir, since my graduation from the point, I've never been remiss in any single assignment. I've held the code and tradition of the point of my rank. I've at all yes, times... Yes, yes, son. You have been chained to a desk a long time, haven't you? You may report to Lieutenant Acton. Oh, thanks, Dad. Thanks. thanks. No, everything's all right on the Shenzhen. Chuck wagon's all loaded and ready to go. As soon as we rest these horses, we'll be right with you, Mr. Acton. Right, Mr. Knight. Tuesday morning. Right, sir. Oh, I almost forgot. Where's that piece of luggage? Throw it. There she comes, Lieutenant. And they told me you played rugby at the point. <laughs> A lot of practice, that's all. Adoration. That's the stuff actresses use, so they tell me. <laughs> sure good. Yes, huh? sirree. This is really something. Boy, take a look at that. <laughs> Get your hands off my clothes. Oh, we're, we're awfully sorry, ma'am. Sorry. That's fine. Look at that and that. You've ruined everything. A broken mirror. That's seven years bad luck I don't need. My favorite cologne. How do you expect me to replace that? How did you get a hold of my things anyway? Well, if you'll cool off for a minute, we might try and explain. Yeah, your luggage is dropped off by mistake at Fort Blaine and got mixed up with Sergeant Johansson's bag. You do remember the sergeant, don't you, lady? If it's all right with you, we'll bid you good afternoon. And uh, don't bother to thank us. Wait a minute, Lieutenant. Suppose you come inside and let me fix that cut. Brave, aren't you? By the way, how did you ever get to be an officer? You're no West Pointer. And you. You're no Lily. Kind of rough on her, aren't you, mister? I know her, Breed. Known them all my life. <laughs> Go ahead, enjoy yourself. Say, that gal packs a nifty, right? Ah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, wait a minute, Lieutenant. You better come inside and let me fix that cut before you bleed to death. <laughs> oh! How's it going, Pete? Fine. How are you, Bert? Uh, hey, Bert. Seven out. Hello, Hank. Hello, Kimber. Laura's in town. She's in your office now. Thanks, Joe. Laura. Hello, Bert. Nice to see you again. It's been almost two years. When'd you get in? Three days ago. I'm sorry I wasn't here. I got a hunch you're headed for Frisco. Just a guess. A bad guess. I've taken rooms upstairs. I'm going to settle here. You must be joking. Another bad guess, Bert. Hey, 
this was nice. Very nice. Must have cost you plenty. I know, I know. It's none of my business. Look, Burke, you know why I've come back. No, what? The Blue Star. I don't know what you're driving at, Laura, but uh, I bought Tom's interest and paid him off to the last dollar. Listen, for two years, he hardly had enough for doctors. There were times when he didn't have enough money for medicine. He didn't leave a lead nickel when he died. That's a very nice, heroic little speech. And if I had any money to spare, I'd let you have some. I don't want that kind of money. The Blue Star is taking him plenty. It's half mine. I've got it in writing from Tom himself. You've got what? A paper with your signature. If you have, it's a forgery. Burke, you can't pull out of this one. Gentlemen. This is Mr. Johnstone, my lawyer. Mr. Tom. I know the marshal. Hello, Burke. I had a hunch you'd pull something. That's why, for a slight investment, I brought these gentlemen along. Tom's deed to me as half owner of the Blue Star is legal, wouldn't you say? Perfectly legal and airtight. Looks to me like you got yourself a smart partner, Burke. Come on, boys. The drinks are on the house. My half of the house. How's the take tonight, Joe? Pretty good, Miss Laura. 
Play something sentimental, Professor. Doc Pick, but he got into a little trouble and had to leave town. Wait a minute, Lieutenant. I heard you ask for a doctor. Anything wrong? One of my men is badly wounded. Why don't you take him back to the fort? Blood poisoning may set in. Better do something right away. Let me help you. You can't help me. How do you know? Oh. Move the lamp closer. <laughs> Some gauze. Hold them. <laughs> You're pretty good. Where'd you learn this? Picked it up, knocking around places. See now why you should have let me fix that thumb? That time? <laughs> First match? Hold his arm, will you? <laughs> it's all right, Randy. It's all over now. That's all right, Lieutenant. You'll have to be bandaged. Yes, I'll take care of that. Do you like your work here? I'm the Blue Star. Oh, I thought Kimber was. That's right. I'm half owner. Oh, I see. No, you don't. We're business partners. The whitest, squarest man I've ever known. He's sleeping. I'd like to stay around till the doctor gets here from the fort, if you don't mind. I'm going downstairs. Night's young yet for me. Eight. I want that pair. Shut up. You play with those. Eddie, give him what he wants. Say, who's the boss around here? Kimber told You're me. You're fired. To... Now you know who's boss. Jerry, take over the table. I'll shoot him. Take tonight. Pretty good. I think it's good. Bad arithmetic. Better check that again.
Well, let's be reasonable, shall we? Go ahead, talk. A woman's no good in this business. And the Blue Star isn't big enough for two people. Maybe you could arrange for me to buy you out. Come in. All right, Eddie, let's have it. She fired me. I've been running the game the way you told me, but she's got different ideas. Go on back to your table. Eddie is through. I fired him and he'll stay fired. Why, oh, you meddling little. <laughs> I figured he'd rest better in bed. I hope it's all right. He's a good friend. That's the break only a man gets. How's that? Men have friends. Real friends. Women, as a rule, don't draw that kind of friendship. You have it. Tom Andrews, I loved him. He died. It's cold. This time of morning, it's always cold. Better put this on. I thought it only could happen once. Just once. The real thing, I mean. But I could be wrong. You're afraid to believe that, aren't you? Maybe. Why? Reasons. A girl? Could be. Do you love her? I wonder. You know, Laura, you think you're wise. But being cynical, that's not wisdom. <laughs> uh, I don't even want to know who she is. His sister. never happened. Doctor? Yes.
tell Papa? Nothing to tell. Kitty, let's not wait all that time. Three months? That's not very long. Well, sure it is. Anything can happen in three months. Let's not wait, Kitty. We can get married next week, tomorrow. How about it, Kitty? Oh, but Larry, I've already written to Mother. And a church wedding is what I've always dreamed about. Of course. Anything you say, Kitty. I'll write you every day. That way I won't miss you so much. The three months will go by quickly. You'll see. All right, folks, we're heading east. Yeah, honey, let's go. Hello, Laura. Hello, Frank. Sims, how's tricks? Slower than molasses. Money must be getting tight. Do you read fortunes, Laura? You're supposed to be good at it? That's what they tell me. Do they ever come true? Surprising sometimes. Uh-uh. Up pops the devil. No, just a mortal man. And he's in love with a girl. A girl not of his world. The kind of girl he never hoped to win. But he did. Well, now he is in trouble. Another girl. That makes it difficult for him. This second girl is of his world. Knowing that same hard knocks. And she's in love with him, too. So is the other one. Maybe even more. Uh-oh. Isn't it too bad there has to be a joker in every deck? It's a tough world. A man can't live in peace with it. Or with himself. Unless he can make up his mind about things and do something about it. Now, wouldn't that be best for everyone concerned? Say, hey, Laura, whose fortune are you telling anyway? Laura, I found two more I will use in the till last night. I don't like those tin horns taking us like that. That's what happens when a woman has two things on her mind. Business and, uh, what's the word? Oh, yeah, unrequited love. Look, Bert, I don't want any more arguments. Take it out of my cut. Touchy, aren't you? Woman's work is never done. Oh, uh, there's another letter in there from Kitty. Say, what's eating you? If you like, maybe, uh, maybe we can talk about it. Talk about what? Well, there's Laura Jordan. What about her? Cut it out, Larry. You're not fooling anybody. I always understood that a man's private business was his own. It is. Well, then shut up. I'm just thinking about Kitty. Your engagement, what it means to her. Thinking about it. That's all I've been doing for weeks. Larry, why don't you pack up and go to St. Louis? 
Once you see Kitty again, everything will be all right. It's too late for that. She can't mean that much to you. She's nothing special. You've met dozens just like her. You said so yourself. I was mistaken. No, I don't think so. I know her kind, too. You're not the first man she's loved, and you won't be the last. I think I can whip the daylights out of you. Maybe one of these days I'll have to prove it. All right. What's the story? No story. Just happened to be in town, thought we might as well get acquainted. Just like that, huh? Come on, Laura. Be nice. What do you want me to do? Fall on your neck? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd like that. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? You peg women only two ways, don't you? Good or bad. I thought you were Larry's friend. I am. You came here to prove to Larry that I'm the kind of woman you think I am, didn't you? Well? Do you think it would make the least bit of difference to him? Probably not. Now, you see, he's wearing blinders. So? So one of these days off they come. Then where will he be? In very good hands, mister. All right. You win. I'm guilty. I'm sorry. You know, Larry's had it pretty rough most of his life. Now he has a great army career ahead of him. The love of a fine girl. Marriage. You gonna upset the apple cart? He doesn't love her. You have all the answers, haven't you, Laura? It's true. Yeah, that's exactly the way a woman like you would figure it. All right, get out of here. Let him go. Give him his walking papers. Get out of here. Laura. It's three o'clock. At five, the eastbound stage rolls in. What about the stage? You're going to be on it. What is this? A floater out of town? You know, Bert, this will surprise you. If you hadn't moved in on me like this, I might have left town on my own account. Is that so? Now I'm staying. There's 5,000. It's yours as soon as you sign this paper. Oh, it's legal. You're barking up the wrong tree. That offer's good only as long as you leave on that stage. You better sign it, Laura. You don't scare me, Bert. You've tried this before. Maybe this time I'll make it stick. You know, things can happen. <laughs> 
Nothing's going to happen. In a dozen different ways. Somebody picks you up in the street or in your room. Murder or suicide, who can tell? Sign it. You win. First Lieutenant Lawrence R. Knight, United States Army. You're advised that having well and faithfully performed your duties as First Lieutenant, your promotion to the rank of Captain, United States Army, has been authorized. Shall I continue? No, sir. There are one or two points I wish you'd help me clear up. Can you affirm that you killed the man Kimber in self-defense? Can you say that? I killed him because he deserved to be killed. For a woman. To protect a woman. As you know, I've reposed faith and confidence in you. Your career is just beginning. Sir, I wish to resign. This involves my daughter, your fiance. Am I to conclude that you intend to break off the engagement? I would only bring sadness into her life. You've made a very grave decision. Under the circumstances, your resignation must be phrased to read for the good of the service. I hope you understand the full meaning of I understand, sir. We must write Kitty. She should know about this at once. How could he do this? How could he do this to her? Let's leave this place. Let's get away from here. Do you mean that? That's what you've been planning, isn't it? Well, yes, I have, but I kind of held off talking to you about it. I've been thinking of moving farther west and settling down. On cattle land. Cattle land. They're building empires out there, and cattle is doing it. Beef to feed the people of this growing country. We can be part of the building, part of the growing.
Hello, Phil. Hello, Kitty. Phil, I never knew I could hate a man so much. That's no good, Randy. I can't help it, I do. I'm going to see him. Came over to. I thought. Well, maybe we can have a man to man talk. What about? Larry, I'm going to make an out and out appeal to you. Does uh, Kitty know you're here? No, she doesn't, but I. Can we do something? Can we straighten things out? It's all up to you. What's up to me? Look, Larry, why don't you give up that woman? What are you driving at? Well, you couldn't have stopped loving Sis that easily. She's worth a thousand Laura Jordans. A man doesn't marry a woman like Laura Jordan. Maybe for only a month Go and then... Go easy on that talk, Randy. Maybe it's the kind of life you like. I'm warning you again. Maybe it's where you've always belonged. Pick up that gun, Larry. You're drunk, Randy. You're drunk. Pick it up. I don't... <laughs> That's something. I never thought I'd see the great Larry Knight run for his life. You never thought I'd get him when you walked out on her. All the tears of disgrace. That's only part of what you made me. See about Randy. I had to do it, Larry. I had to do it. He would have killed you. I wish. I wish it hadn't happened. I wish you were him. You've got to understand that, Larry. 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 I don't know how to write the things I feel in my heart. I realize that any explanations I may make cannot erase the tragedy of Randy's death. He was my friend, and to the last, I wanted to be his. I beg of you to believe that the shooting was unexpected and uh, in self-defense. Self-defense? With a bullet in Randy's back? I tell you, Colonel Reedy doesn't deserve any consideration. Nevertheless, we'll bring him in. I wouldn't believe him on a dying oath. I'll order Sergeant Johansson to bring him in. May I request the Colonel give me that assignment? I'll give him an even break. I won't shoot him in the back. This will not become a personal vendetta between you and Knight, Mr. Acton. Yes, sir. Blaming yourself. A few hours ago, we were planning to get away from Jackson. All right, let's get away. I'll make Joe a present of the Blue Star. By daylight, we'll be miles away.
Yes, somebody just blew in town, Larry. Maybe he's from the fort. I wanted to tip you off. Thanks, Joe. I, I saw him. expect to see you, Kitty. Hello, Larry. Oh, Larry, I don't want to believe that you shot Randy. I came here only because I have to know. It's important for me to know. It's... Well, it's not an easy thing to explain. I'd rather wait and tell it to your father. But you couldn't have deliberately shot Randy that way. I won't believe it. I shot him, all right. In the back? Why, Larry, why? I shot him, that's all I can tell you. That isn't self-defense. That's murder. Just plain murder. Listen, lady. Wait a minute, Laura. I shot your brother. Larry's trying to shield me. Keep out of this. It was his life or Larry's. I don't believe it. They were friends, good friends, until you... Yeah, until I stepped in. Randy couldn't get it through his head that Larry and I might be in love. That's right, really in love. Maybe you can't either. I didn't have a thing against Randy. He had a right to think his way, have opinions about me. So have you. That's fine. So you shot him in the back. Larry was wounded, unarmed. It was the only thing I could do. I'm just as sorry as anyone. It happened. I'd give anything in the world if it happened. You've got to believe that. I believe you, Larry. But you've got to go away. Get out of town. Phil is coming after you. When? He was saddling his horse when I left. I got here as quickly as I could. To warn Larry? Does that surprise you? I'll wait for Phil. Oh, Larry, what's the good of another killing? I won't be armed. He doesn't care about that. He won't stop to reason. He's got only one thought. You killed Randy. Well, I'm not running away. It won't be running away. No, it won't. Just means there won't be another shooting. Left Jackson. Laura too. When? Oh, maybe half hour ago. Where? I don't know. Where? I don't know. 
the Home Canyon Pass, heading south. I'll be back. It's Indian country. I sure wish we didn't have to go in there. Maybe he won't cross into it. Maybe. It's our best chance. It's our only chance. Maybe we can lose him. Smoke signals. They know we're here. Looks like it. If it's Chief Yellowstone Scotch, they may be friendly. Maybe. I've known him a long time. But if it's those young braves... We'll be in for trouble. I know this country. We'll stick to the canyons and rocks. I think we'll get through. <laughs> Start writing about midnight. Try to cut through this part here. If we make it, we'll. Who was it? 
I don't know. Probably a stray Indian. How long will it be before we're out in the clear? Free from anybody watching us, chasing us. If we get beyond Raven's Pass, we can cut northerly. No trails for anybody to pick up. It's all protected country, all the way to Leghorn. Then we can catch a stage for the headwaters of the Colorado. Then I'll be home. Home. Yeah. You know I'm getting to know you better every day I live. Those guns. You too, Laura. Phil. He's got it all figured out, Laura. But he's not sure. Maybe it's hard to believe any man would shoot his best friend in cold blood in the back. It is hard, isn't it, Phil? But if you're so sure, why don't you fire? I don't know why I don't kill you, why I can't kill you, but if I told you once I was gonna knock the daylights out of you, well, this is it.
Jenna Ta. What Lee? Ima. Bayut Dewa. Chief Yellowstone, very sad that his brave do great wrong. He is tired of bloodshed, and he been head to white man now. And from where sun now stand, he give word there be no fighting by any of his people forever. Laura. Laura. Everything's going to be all right now. Like I said it would be. Laura, do you hear me? We're going home. Colorado. Like you said. Our home. Larry. I'm a jinx, Larry. I'm like a bad paper. Oh!